It's the Back to School Bash, the biggest event of the summer. Charlotte Motor Speedway, the dirt track, 10 of the top monster trucks in the nation getting set to do battle on the wildest track all year long. We're going to get straight to the action, taking a look at qualifying and highlights on this long and challenging crossover track in Charlotte. Out first, it's Torrin Snyder in Illuminator. The top eight trucks will make it into the racing bracket. Two trucks sit on the bench during racing. It may be qualifying, but these drivers are battling for position. They all want to participate in this wild and unique track. If you've never joined us for the Back to School Bash before, as you can see, the trucks make essentially two laps around the track. Each track completely unique, but intertwined at the same time. And you've got to deal with the 60-foot crossover jump. Don't come up short on that one, or it's going to get gnarly. Snyder out on the track right now, getting a feel for the track, but also laying down his qualifying time. He's looking pretty smooth out there. It doesn't feel like a blistering run, but we'll wait for the official time as he crosses the finish line. Snyder in Illuminator sets the tone with a 123. So clearly nearing a minute and a half on this track. It's John Gordon and Bad Company, an incredible truck with an incredible record at the Back to School Bash. He's won a number of years. He'd like to take racing once again. I expect him to be fast out here on the track. the bus stop powering down the back straightaway. It's a tricky little rhythm down the back straightaway trying to get the line on all three of those obstacles. You want to keep low over the bus stop, but then you don't want to launch it over the center obstacle and land in the face of the final obstacle. Jay Gord coming around. Oh! Flips the tire a little out of shape. That tricky turn obstacle, it may wreak havoc throughout the night. Gordon hits the finish line with a 1-16. Bad company sets the tone. I expect this man to be one of the contenders tonight. John Zimmer Jr., terminal velocity. One of the young superstars rising in the industry, and he is one to watch. Simply incredible performances. Son of John Zimmer Sr., a veteran in the monster truck industry. The two have come together to form their own team, Send It Motorsports, aptly named, and I expect some big things from Terminal Velocity and Uproar tonight at the Back to School Bash. Straightaway looking good. This could be close. I expect Jay Gordon and Little Zim to be on point all night long. And there you see it setting the tone again, resetting the bar. John Zimmer Jr. and Terminal Velocity. Uproar, John Zimmer Sr. on the track, taking a look back at the highlight. Right there, you see it on landing over the crossover throws the entire front drive line out of that truck. That's going to be a DNF. 
that's going to put him behind the eight ball for making this racing field if they can get the truck back together in the first place. Right now, he sits last. On the track now, it's Darren Basil and the incredible blockhead from DC Power Sports. Blockhead with some issues. The surface just a little bit slippery. We had some rain come through the night before. And also the track crew's been watering the track today to keep the dust down at the same time. And so it's clean out there. It's not muddy, but it still has a layer of slickness on the top. Blockhead came in with a 119, putting him solidly in the field. Toxic Preston Perez out on the track. He had a solid run as well, making it safely into the field at a 122. Right now, Illuminator and Uproar setting on the outside looking in. Tim Jones and the Albino Tailgater out on the track. Struggling a little bit around the track, up near the bus stop off the side. He's got trouble and he needs to pick it up if he's going to make it. Jones with a little bit of a bad bounce. I think he got lost on this huge track. There are chalk lines on the track. There are tire boundaries, but nonetheless, on this huge track from inside the cab, Tim Jones, a little disoriented. No direct penalty there as he penalized himself via the time lost, but this may cost him. We'll see in a moment. Tailgater now on the outside. 128, Tailgater in uproar sitting on the outside looking in for racing as dirt crew Jerry Beck from DCT Power Sports is on the track trying to make the field. Beck sounding a little more conservative out there than some of the other trucks, at least the ones leading the charge. We've seen drivers not make the field just by trying to make a conservative pass and keep the equipment alive. Hope Beck doesn't lean off of it too much. Not setting the track on fire, but a 122 get him into the field with only two trucks remaining. So we get down to it. Who's going on, not on the trailer, but who's sitting this one out, longing to be on this track, and who makes the field? Roberto Trevino in the Kamikaze, making his first pass ever at the Back to School Bash. Definitely a disadvantage for the rookies out here trying to get acclimated with a track you just simply don't see anywhere else in the industry throughout the season. And Berto, a new driver, he's done a good job so far, but this is a brand new challenge. He's making his pass around the track, doing a solid job. It's conservative. If he can beat a 128, he should make it. Uproar with the DNF and Tailgater not looking favorable right now. Trevino not looking fast, but still smooth. Trevino with a 125. He'll make it in the field. Not a fast run, but just fast enough to get it done. And our final competitor in qualifying, Dalton Widener and Jurassic Attack, the defending racing champion here. Widener looked awesome last year. He's back in the Jurassic Attack for 24. 
at the back to school bash and he loved to back it up. This race means so much to these drivers to win on such a big stage and a uniquely challenging driver's track. Right now, John Zimmer Jr. and Terminal Velocity sitting in P1 as the top qualifier. Widener looking good out there and smooth. He could challenge the lead. If he doesn't break and his team finishes the run, it's going to be fast. Competitor is in Jurassic Attack with a 115 second in the field behind Terminal Velocity, John Zimmer Jr., Tailgater, and Uproar. We'll sit this one out, but right now I bet the Uproar team is thrashing to get that front drive shaft all cleaned up, hopefully to come back for best trick and or freestyle. We'll see what happens as we get ready to move into racing action. It's round number one. Berto Trevino made the field in Kamikaze, but his reward is the number one qualifier, Terminal Velocity, John Zimmer Jr. Little John almost skipping into that final obstacle on the first straightaway, heading to the crossover. Always an incredible moment. Heading to the back side of the track, terminal velocity. It looks like he's ahead, but. Roberto Trevino in the Kamikaze will have something of the shorter path around the second time. Little John has to keep his width about him. He doesn't want to overdrive, but he can't underdrive and inadvertently let Berto drive around him in the Kamikaze. Kamikaze safely clearing the crossover but it looks like it's going to be all John Zimmer Jr. in Terminal Velocity. Now you see Berto in Kamakaze finishing the run. That plays two factors. A, there could have been a penalty on this huge track on Terminal Velocity. And also, sometimes we see breakage in this event and it's always valuable to make your run and complete your pass to potentially come back as a fast loser if necessary. Right now, it's bad company. The number three qualifier and Gerald Beck in big dumpy, the Dirt Crew in the far lane. Dirt Crew coming around for the crossover. We're gonna get a crossover flyover. That's gotta be wild sitting in bad company underneath as you have a monster dump truck flying over your head. And right now there's a monster dump truck flying into bad company's lane up and over. Beck misses the corner a little bit and hits one of the turn markers, kicking the dump truck upside down. Get a load of that. By impediment, Bad Company will move on to round number two with Dirt Crew in his lane. Moving through round number one. On the line now, it's Blockhead and Toxic. Looking at the middle of the field right now, the 4-5 matchup, Basil in the Blockhead has really made a home for himself with this truck. Basil, one of the journeyman drivers in the industry driven a lot of different pieces throughout his career, a long-standing career, but really looking good with the blockhead truck. In the other lane, Toxic Perez, he's got industry experience, but he is really getting acclimated with this Toxic truck and doing a very solid job. Toxic 
racing a puff of smoke and pulling off the track instantly before he gets to the crossover. That should hand the win to Blockhead in the event that neither truck make it to the finish line. The truck that makes it the furthest on the track would be declared the winner, but then they've got to make it back for the next round. But no issues in this one. Blockhead moves to the semifinals. Our final pair in round number one, Jurassic Attack, the defending winner of racing at the Back to School Bash and Illuminator, Corey Snyder in the far lane. Jurassic second in qualifying. Meanwhile, Illuminator only seven. A substantial difference in their lap times in qualifying. Can Snyder make up ground? Snyder is definitely in the race right now, but Widener will have the short way around on the second half of the lap. Snyder a little bit slow getting through the cross of the Widener, closing the gap in the Jurassic truck. going to go down to the horns as Jurassic Attack moves to the semifinals. Monster trucks aren't the only entertainment at the Back to School Bash. How much more fitting can you get than school bus racing? And these guys get after it, putting definition to rubbing is racing. They're all bound up. There are monster truck obstacles on the track that these guys are watching out for. And up and over as they hit one of those obstacles, launching the bus onto the side. It certainly got wild, but I expect this to get wild as we move to the semifinals. This could be the race of the night. John Gordon, bad company. Terminal velocity, John Zimmer Jr. to the crossover. You can hear these guys are just on it. Pedal to the floor. The motor's just ringing as they roar around the track. Each of these guys knows it's going to take the best they've got if they want to move to the semifinals from this race. Right now, Terminal Velocity in the lead. Gordon coming around to the crossover. It's a little bit closer than we've seen. Both of them still in it. Gordon with the short side around. Gordon slides the rear tires off the obstacle, up and over, back onto its wheels. If Terminal has a problem, Gordon could still be in this, but Terminal backing it down, safely crossing the finish line. An incredible race right down to the final corner, but Terminal Velocity goes to his first final round in Charlotte. Taking a look back, Gordon smoothly clears the tabletop, but drifting around the corner a little too far as the back tire falls off of the obstacle, kicking the truck up and over. That's all it took for Terminal Velocity to seize the moment. Looking at our second semifinal matchup, it's Jurassic Attack, the number two qualifier, and the number four qualifier, Blackhead. Widener in Jurassic has looked excellent in preliminary rounds and qualifying. He's off to a big jump just down the front straightaway. Blockhead going to have to crank it up a notch to see if he can build some speed around this track because he's got time against him. Out of shape heading to the crossover, but Blockhead makes it smoothly over. 
heading around the inside track. Widener in Jurassic heading around the outside track. Don't let the truck in the lead get to you when you're on the outside track. Widener, smooth, calm, and collected, heading down the back straightaway. The crossing is where we'll really get a feel for positioning on the track. Widener has closed the gap heading into the lead, into the final corner. Jurassic just has to finish the track up and over the bus stop. Power down to the finish line. Dalton Widener in Jurassic Attack, heading to the back to school bash. Final round for the second year in a row. Looking to back up his championship. Not to be outdone, we've also got Super Bob Airborne. Up and overflowing through the mobile home, Super Bob Airborne. Not everybody had success in racing or even made racing. And so we've got best trick action for those that didn't make it out of round number one. Uproar, still no front wheel drive, but it's wild to see the truck come out here in two wheel drive. Those front wheels not actually turning as he pulls off an awesome slap wheelie and getting a nice donut out of it. Nice performance in two wheel drive, setting the tone at an 11. Tim Jones and the Albino Gator standing it straight up and down on the bus stack and then mixing it up with his second hit in best trick with a little bit of balance and coordination on the Gator nose. He takes the lead with a 16. Roberto Trevino in Kamikaze on the track with that 79 Ford throwback body showing that he can do what the Gator can do just as well. A little bit of a rear steer kick, nice balance on the nose there, coming back around for his second hit. Roberto off to four, the donut right on the front straightaway in front of the crowd. Nice solid donut. The score will be an 11. Not gonna get it done in best trick tonight. Big Dumpy, he's already been up and over with the dirt crew. Looking for the slap wheeling. Probably not exactly what dirt crew was looking for. Oh, and not what he was looking for either as Jerry Beck hooks a rut in turn four. Sending Dirt Crew on its lead for the second time tonight. The score only a 10, not going to get it done either. Our final competitor, Illuminator. The score to beat a 16. Corey Snyder with a little bit of a slap wheelie, not as long as we've seen from other competitors. The score going to beat an 11. So that makes our winner of best trick. Gator and Tim Jones. A little consolation for not making it into the racing bracket, and I expect we'll see him burn it down in freestyle. It's finals time at the Back to School Bash, and it couldn't get any more exciting than this. Go number one and number two match up from qualifying terminal velocity and the defending racing champion at the Back to School Bash, Jurassic Attack Dalton Widener. This is going to be a showdown. We saw it in the semifinals. These drivers know they have to pick it up even more every round. 
neither of these drivers will give an inch. You've got to find a way to take it. Terminal a little out of shape on the backstretch. That's going to cost him. That's going to get into his head. Coming around for the second lap. Little John tossing it into the corner. Heading to the underside of the crossover. Widener coming around to the crossover through turn three and four. Widener loses power. Oh my goodness. Jurassic attack face first into the bus. The track crew already on site tending to him. Terminal on the complete opposite side of the track finishing the run in the final round. Oh no! Catastrophe! Little John Zimmer. Okay, he's climbing out of the truck. A horrendous crash on the finish line. Taking the back to school bash crown. Widener's out of the truck. He's stunned. Little John, can't believe what just happened out there. Let's take a look back at this. This was incredible. The race was neck and neck the entire time. Both drivers at 100%. And I don't think it could have gotten any wilder than it did. Taking a look back, Widener coming up the face of the crossover just seems to lose power. It didn't look like the RII shut off. I don't know what happened with the truck. Maybe an EFI issue. A lot of trucks running the new EFI. You're not going to believe this angle though. Monsters Monthly with an incredible angle from the bus. We might get a little bit better view. You see the lane light still on, so the truck should have power, but was the engine running at that point? Taking a look back, the key moments. There you see the orange left lane light. It's on the entire time, so what caused the truck to lose power? That is going to haunt Dalton Widener. Glad he is okay, an incredible crash. But in the other lane, the rear steer breaks, coming up the final obstacle. He was running the run out. He's got radio communication with the pits. On the other side of the track, Widener being tended to already, so he just finished out the run. And the truck kicks, sending the truck into a barrel roll. Simply incredible. Glad to see both drivers are okay. John Zimmer Jr., you're racing champion in an incredible fashion. Take a picture with Rue and the trophy, the cookout, Monster Bash, racing champion, receiving his trophy from Rue Reeves on stage at the dirt track at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Video assistance provided by Monsters Monthly and Back Channel Productions. Racing has been wild, but it's about to get a little bit wilder with freestyle. John Zimmer with uproar. We saw him with some mechanical issues earlier in the night. They've cleaned up the truck, but he's still running in two-wheel drive. Great to Super Bob Airborne's mobile home. Taking that down, destroying it, setting his tone for freestyle. You see a, bit, a different approach from up four in freestyle with only two wheel drive, maybe a little more slap wheelie presence. Truck sliding around as he doesn't have those front tires to pull. Nothing to drive them, so when they're not under power and not on the ground, they're going to stop rolling fairly quickly. Zimmer, a veteran in the industry, knows how to get it done with compromised equipment. He can get it done here, and he's still going to put on a show.
freestyle at the back to school bash. A two minute clock with four judging criteria, 10 points each time. Momentum, wow factor, and use of clock. Putting a little more definition on the scoring and criteria of what is expected of these competitors if they expect to take home a prestigious trophy like the back to school bash freestyle trophy. Looks like he'll probably fill the time. Not a lot of momentum, that two-wheel drive making it slippery and tricky to maneuver around the track. a pretty solid score. Looking to match or beat that is Corey Snyder in Illuminator. Light up the night. He's on the track. We've seen some great performances out of him before in Illuminator and in Toxic. He's got the ability, but can he get it done? Corey Snyder, big air to start the freestyle. Looking good out there. Heading to the bus stack from another bus stack. So going for the big obstacles. But it, oh, he's locked up the right rear. That's going to be it for Illuminator. Short on time. Not going to get it done tonight with only a 15. The newcomer, Berto Trevino in Kamikaze. Berto doing a good job out here tonight. He's not torn the equipment up so far. He's made all of his hits, doing a good job. Oh, you can see that one coming from the moment he hit. That's a tough side slap. Trevino clearly not afraid of this wild track out here, hitting pretty much anything in front of him. Going for the motor home, up or took out the mobile home. Wiped it out. Berto coming back to the bus stack. Wow! What a concussion as he blows the front left tire off of the bead. Looks like everything's still intact. The wheel's still on the truck. The tire flopping around, poofing again. But I think that's going to be it. He shut off. That'll be the end of the run. That'll save him from wadding up a wheel or wasting the tire even more. The score will be a 24. Solid, but not going to get it done. He just came up a little bit short. Tim Jones, he took best trick with the tailgater. Can he back that up with a freestyle win? Tim Jones known to get angry and get wild, walking the tailgater already on the tail. Jones rolling with the tail rides in the tailgater, hitting all the bus stacks and carrying those slappers across the track. 
going for the motorhome without quite the same effect that Kamikaze had because of it being fresh. Ooh, another side slap off of that bus stack. The ground a little bit wet in front of that obstacle. I think it's creating an awkward setup for these guys as they come around into turn one. Backside of the crossover, a new move we've not seen, so that could score highly with the wow factor in the judges. Oh, rough timing there. He was looking for a slap wheelie, but that may have torn out the rear end on the truck. No power getting to the rear end. Tim Jones, always the showman, trying to find a way because he's got the will. Going for the reverse donut on the front stretch. The score of 30. That puts him in the lead right now as Bad Company. We've seen him win the Back to School Bash before. John Gordon on the track looking to do it again. Big Air, another tough hit. Just like we saw out of the tailgater. Gordon known for huge air, huge momentum, and those are two traits that could score very well with our professional judges. Use of track, also one of the criteria for the freestyle judges, so hitting all of the different angles. Gordon looking for something that some of the other drivers have not done yet, whipping it into a sliding donut, making use of that slippery surface on turn number four and heading back towards the crossover. No, heading to the bus. Big Air with the brake check. Gordon going for the cross thread double. Oh, but the slippery track surface gets the best of him heading to the bus stack as he's got to stop and back up, whipping it into reverse quickly. Probably not a lot of harm to the momentum score. Maybe a little bit, but Gordon knows what's going on. Took care of the situation, kept it going as he heads to the motorhome. Or oh, what's left of it. Not a lot left there after Kamikaze and Tailgater taking that out. A wild power drift donut down the front straight was walking it all the way across the track and heading up and over the downside of the crossover. Gordon doing things that we've not seen from the other drivers going back to Super Bob's motorhome, launching over the trailer, cross-threading Gordon, getting after it, really trying to provide something different as one of the later competitors. Taking what we just saw out of Tailgater, going up the backside of the crossover and making it bigger. That scores points. That is wow factor using all of the angles as well on the track. He's hitting a lot of different obstacles. Gordon with a good run as time expires. He pulls to the front stretch and salutes the crowd and he's the new leader with a 32 and one truck remaining. It all comes down to Blockhead. Darren Basil with some success in freestyle lately, really doing a great job with the Blockhead truck. Can he build on that and take home the back to school bash freestyle trophy? A 32 is the mark from John Gordon and Bad Company. Basil on the spot in the last position in freestyle. Will he rise or will he fall? Setting the tone strong so far. Nice wheelies. He had a slapper early. Another great slapper. Up the crossover. Incredible. Pile drives into the bus. Quickly realizing he can't get up and over that. Backing up. Taking the safe approach so that he can finish his run. Not going to benefit him if he doesn't score full points in 
filling the time. Walking it up and over the bus, flinging debris around, getting a lot of spectacle, throwing out that wow Falconer, coming back to center stage. Basil, it looks like he may be losing front drive, possibly the front differential going away. He may be rear wheel drive only right now. Basil, the veteran, going after it nonetheless, attacking the mobile home. Busting some blocks on the truck as the front tire gets up into the bodywork. Working a damaged truck, closing the show. Basil fighting the truck a little bit. The blockhead not completely cooperating, losing a little bit of the wow factor and the momentum. Whipping it into a donut. like the left front wheel pulling power but the right front maybe a broken axle and it'll cost him tonight but a great run nonetheless blockhead with a 24 that's not going to get it done bad company takes freestyle terminal velocity takes racing you know what man it's a, it's a point effort i couldn't do it without all the people in the back i got matt ball and that man he's been beside my side for like six years doing this monster truck thing and he sacrificed so much to be on the road for me and come put on a show for all you fans She's over there selling her merch. My girlfriend, my parents, they're over there hanging out, having a good time with us. But you know what? We keep doing this, and we do it for the fans. The good Lord's blessed us all to be in the United States where it's free, and we come out here. And you know what, man? We're here to put on a show. That's what we did tonight. Honestly, it's not the freestyle I wanted to put on. I was fighting some truck issues out there, but we made the best of it, and we put on a show for the Charlotte fans. Charlotte, did you guys? What a night. Thanks for joining us and we'll catch you next time.